Dean uh, Scarborough Sanitary District Workshop. And I know we have some folks in the public here this evening, and we're here to discuss the uh, Unitel Eastern R Road Gate Station. Let me take it from there. Sure. Okay. Um, as I provide in your packet, Unitel would like to locate a natural gas meter and regulatory station at the old treatment plant site or pump station four site off the old Eastern Trail near the Eastern Village development. Currently, the town is using this site for Eastern Trail parking, and uh, the proposed facility would not interfere with that use. This workshop is to discuss uh, land acquisition options, easements, purchases, or lease as well as other concerns that may, the board may have if they choose to move forward with this um, uh, project. Uh, Unitel had a similar station further north on Eastern Road near the intersection with Black Point Road that has since been eliminated. Originally, Unitel had planned on locating this station at the original site, but the town had asked them to locate, look at alternative sites and suggested the old plant as uh, one of the alternatives. Following some of the information I gathered as uh, I prepared uh, for this workshop, uh, the, the town considers Unitel as a public utility similar to the CMP and the Scarborough Sanitary District. Uh, Unitel is allowed within the public rights of way without payment or lease. Unitel is a private company and does pay taxes on its infrastructure uh, with it to the town of Scarborough. And with that, currently Unitel's infrastructure within Scarborough is assessed at uh, just shy of $3 million. Um, the current tax rate is $15.49 per thousand. Uh, uh, this facility, uh, its value is approximately a million dollars. I think that's what you guys had told me. Uh, and the, the taxes on a million dollars uh, that would be going to the town, if it was assessed that that would be $15,000. $500 uh, per year. Um, I had preliminary discussions with Bernstein Shore concerning this matter and um, uh, just really to bring them up to speed of where we are, not to advise them to move forward in, in any matter, but um, they, they are geared up to move to do, a, um, do some analysis for us uh, with regards to values, for, um, lease, uh, potential lease uh, agreements. Uh, whatever uh, the board would desire if we choose to move forward with this project. Some of the things to consider is uh, if we do decide to, if you do decide to move forward with this, is the agreement options uh, that uh, you'd like to um, evaluate, uh, whether it be purchase, lease, easement, or some other um, uh, type of arrangement. Uh, Site orientation, uh, right now it's being shown very close to the Eastern Trail. There is a, um, a development going in across the way and, and a, another, a couple homes in the um, near vicinity of it. Uh, with that in mind, whether the district would like some screenings and plantings around the unit or um, to, to help alleviate any any type of those things right now that is not shown on the on the plans or any future district needs the uh, district may have with regards to uh, the, the property. Um, right now, I know of none other than our, we do have sewer that goes through the property. Um, other than that, we, we do not have any um, uh, current uh, uh, uses of the property. Uh, if you need any further information, I, I certainly would uh, uh, gather that information after this uh, workshop as, as we move forward with this project. Uh, with that, we do have uh, three gentlemen from Unitel uh, prepared to kind of go over what they're proposing. Um, and I would like to open it up to them at this point, unless the board has some questions. Any questions before we open it up? No? Gentlemen, the floor is yours if you'd like. Uh, I'm John Davis. I'm the senior land manager for Unitel. My right is Bob uh, Shumrick. He's one of our gas engineers. And Roger Farley is another gas engineer. Uh, Bob Portes. There's, there's actually two companies involved here. One's Grand State Gas, which is a high pressure one, and the other being Wood Utilities, which is the distribution system part of the Roger Moore takes care of the Grand State, Bob takes care of the 
So what we have before you is the footprint. Oh, sorry. Should I have been? Oh, I should have been up there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a workshop. Okay. Um, what we have before you is the footprint that we. Yeah, we don't it's more of a uh, like a preliminary. It probably still needs to be fine tuned as far as the footprint. We try to put some contours on there uh, to, to kind of see how the grading would be and kind of fell outside of the footprint that we have right now. But we we show the uh, the uh, line on the right is the atardos. Uh, I think there's 90 feet there, um, and then there's 110 feet. You don't have a pointer, do you? How about, a, how about just using an icon, or, I mean, a mouse to, to show us where those lines are? I can come back. There we go. We found one. Oh, you found one? Somebody found one. Oh. Okay, see the line, yeah, the line on the right there. That's the Atardos property line. What's on right here? Right there. And then the rest of the property <coughs> belongs to the uh, sanitary uh, district, sewer district. So what we did is there's the, the easement that you guys have with the town, or the town has with you, uh, is based on these dimensions. I think the first one was, I can't even read it. Is that 110, Bob? Yeah, so the first step, the first dimension over is 110. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 90, it's, it's 90 feet over from the Otardo property line to the, the land that's leased right now. So the lease land itself is 110 by 110. Then there was talk about the possibility of putting in a future bathroom, and that's the 40 by 40 that you see right there. So what we have then from there is 30 feet over, and then our footprint of, um, I don't see any dimensions, Bob. Well, what's that footprint? 70 by 135. It's the dashed line that you see there. What well, we did, and then we, we kind of just threw that on there and we're looking at it and says, well, let's put some proposed contours on there because um, we need that grade to be up to the road level. And uh, you can see they fall outside that dash. So, but at least, you know, it's, it's, it's like an area that will work. And uh, so we're hoping that this is something that we can work out with you. Mm. Uh, future plans for expansion, is it sized correctly for your needs um, currently, obviously? Based, based on the contours that you see there, and you see the dash line that comes down, it's squared off, mm -hmm. and then you see the proposed contours that go outside that. Um, we might want to adjust a little bit. Now, we still have to go before site plan review. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be issues that, like Dave brought up, about planting and the screening, um, something to kind of make it work in with the and price houses across the road. So we're trying to be sensitive as well to everything that's going on. We do have a 33-foot easement, um, which would be the probably the easterly side of Easton Road that comes from Black Point Road all the way down to Blue... Um, that house is blue? Yeah, Blue something. But... Uh, High Point. Five, okay. I think this is a separation. <coughs> Yeah, you when when uh, you were at my office, um, you mentioned uh, having these facilities inside of buildings, but I don't see. We them now. yeah we um, the, with the building we did look at a building, but um, the building is much more costly, and uh, you know you, at a million dollars we gotta still watch out for a, you know, like a budget on this, so we probably won't have a building. Any noise concerns or anything that we're aware of as far as pumps or the um, here, then the easement and the, uh, what the what the noise that you're going to hear <coughs> probably going to be in the wintertime when everybody has their windows closed. You'll hear um, like a humming, like a vibration of that gas going through the pipe. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if I think some of the other guys. Were. With regards to the metering station, which is that big footprint. Uh, that we were discussing. 
uh, you're going to have gas flowing through the pipe and you're going to get uh, sort of noise uh, created from that. But it really uh, sort of, you're only going to really hear that sort of up close and personal to it. Once you sort of get to the eastern trails, you're really not going to notice it. But if you could, but if you look at that, um, that feature on the far left, uh, with, with that showing the, uh, let me just. Uh, Relief valves. <coughs> this feature here. Okay. Yeah. That's the main. That's, that's the, the main pipeline, pipeline and that what you're seeing there is what we call a mainline valve and bridle, and that's the supply to the metering station. Um, basically, what you have at that mainline valve and bridle is a mainline valve along the pipeline, and if we need to uh, shut down the pipeline for emergency repair or, or maintenance, then you, you, you've got two feeds to the uh, metering station, one from the north, one from the south, and on the north and south there's also a blow-off. So what, if, for instance, we had to do maintenance between um, Scarborough Industrial Park uh, metering station to the south, where you've got one of those uh, mainline valves and bridle, and this location here, you would then feed Scarborough from the south of that mainline valve, and uh, this Eastern Road installation from the north, you would close off the, uh, the mainline valves, and then you would blow off. It's very infrequently, maybe once a year, if that, you're going to have that, but you would, uh, that's when you're going to hear a noise like a, a jet engine, and our normal protocol is the immediate neighbors and so forth, we notify them of this uh, proposed is slowdown. Now, is that buried, is that bridle? The, the, the pipe itself, the mainline valve is buried, and you're going to and you're going to have a spindle coming up, and your pipes, your your risers for the um, for the blow off are going to be above ground. So you are going to have something like a 10 foot by 20 foot compound, and that has to sit along the right of way. And if you go down the uh, road, down Eastern Ro Road, like down the point. trail to Scarborough Industrial Park, what you have there is you've got a a metering station in the compound, mm -hmm. then south of that you have that uh, bridle in a separate compound. That's exactly It'll what that is going to look like. What's your pressure rating on the, your uh, mainline feed valve? Uh, just under 500 uh, PSI. Now this is just um, for the trustees' benefit. This system is being installed to reduce the pressure down to 200 PSI the back feed into South Portland? That's correct, as well as, uh, as, well as 50, 200 pounds to, to feed uh, down to Eastern Road to down East Lane across to Route 1, and then it goes to, the, to uh, Route 1 in South Portland at Mardale Ave, which is where the B&M rail yard is, and that will back feed the city of South Portland. But additionally, you'll see there's two pipes on the outlet here. One's blue or purple, and one is green. Um, the green pipe will actually backfeed uh, the, the, the town of Scarborough at 56 pounds. Uh, there's several developments that we have on, in our, um, <clears throat> on our radar screen right now um, that we would, we would really need to have an up, uh, increase in capacity in our distribution system to serve those developments. Um, <clears throat> one, one is Whistler Road, I believe, and there's a development uh, over on Gorham Road and near the Hannaford Plaza, and uh, there's also a, a, a development uh, off Eastern Road. In other words, we would we would really like to be able to increase our capacity uh, to the town of Scarborough. What's the what? purple one? Uh, the oh, Portland. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, the purple one is the 200-pound. It's an eight-inch pipeline that they're actually installing right now on Eastern Road. And again, that'll go from Eastern Road to Down East over to Route 1 to South okay. Portland at 200 pounds. What's your current pressure ratings in the pipe running through there now for Scarborough? Uh, oh, those are uh, the 56 pounds. Okay. Are there, any, are there any plans or is there any capacity in here for future extension 
out Black Point Road uh, to go to the south out Black Point Road? To <coughs> I'm not aware of that right now. Um, I can certainly find out. Um, so what is the blue, what's the blue pipe there for? Uh, well, That's for South Portland. 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 Yeah, Portland. Yeah, some more down there. It'll go up down East Lane, up, up uh, Eastern Road, up okay. down East Lane. All right. That's Sorry. the 200 pound, yeah. 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 The green line, is that going to go over to Black Point then up? We, the plan right now is um, there's an existing uh, distribution. I'm sorry, Roger. <laughs> there's a, I don't even know if this is working, but uh, it is. I can hear. It. There, there's there's an existing 56-pound uh, uh, polyethylene distribution system that's stubbed off with a valve at the intersection of Black Point Road and Eastern Road. Uh, we would like to we would like to tie into that point right there. And we would also like to consider tying it across the way here to Vista Drive, um, <clears throat> Vista Drive to, to serve that development, that uh, the Anderson development that's currently ongoing right now. So we'd like to have, you know, always like to have two feeds to one system. And, and uh, <clears throat> it is fed right now by the Industrial Park Station, which is about 5,000 feet up, uh, down, down east to the south. Um, but that station has pretty much reached its capacity right now. Now, are you going to run a steel pipe, or are you going to run poly? Uh... Uh, the 56-pound uh, will be high-density polyethylene pipe, which is rated for 99 pounds. Um, that will connect to the polyethylene pipe that we have now in Scarborough distribution system. And obviously, the 200-pound is 8-inch coated steel pipe, which they've already started installing down at the other end. Now, I've got a question. If you're going down the down uh, the Eastern Trail. Uh -huh. How deep are you putting that pipe in? Well, we're mandated to put it three feet deep. Now, there's a couple of entrances into the field there, I believe. Are they going to be sleeved? Are you going to be covered? Or are we going to go through a um, asterisk problem uh, with not... that if someone decides to develop that area? Okay, I'm not sure where you're referring to. <laughs> Um, the, the other side of Otardo's. Okay. All right. Yep. It would be to the south side of Old Eastern. Okay. Because you guys had a heck of a problem or go around with that, putting Mr. Otardo's pipe in. Well, right. Okay. The challenge we had with uh, Mr. Otardo was that the existing 8 inch pipe granite pipeline mm -hmm. that already crosses his land. That was installed back in 1968, and it was 8-inch okay. diameter, 0.156 wall, very thin wall pipe. Uh, to put it into sort of context, standard wall pipe is uh, 0.322 wall, so this is half the wall thickness, and it, it's basically good for cross-country pipelines and isn't good for road traffic. So normally, so when you come across that pipe and you cross roads, you have to either sleeve it or put a better quality pipe. What we put, so when we upgraded that, we put a standard wall pipe, 322 wall pipe, and instead of sort of 30 um, grade B pipe, we put in a higher grade X42, and that is rated for traffic. Likewise, anything we put in here, like the 8-inch uh, 200 pound line that will also be 8 inch diameter 322 wall and x42 and once that goes in if a, a new development goes in and you need to put a road across it not going to have a problem it's going to be rated for for regular traffic <coughs> but maybe to answer your question the 8 inch grand state line that's existing mm -hmm. Um, that'll still have the same issues going forward with any development. Um, there's an easement for that line, and if someone wants to cross it, it'll have to be upgraded for that crossing. Okay. A different issue from what we're doing with the new meter and regular station. Because I didn't know if you were going to run new pipe all the way down through to the connection. At this point, it's not required. We do a uh, like an inspection operation, and Robert, I think Roger could get more into that inspection real quick. And how often we do it, and right now it's yeah. generally speaking, you know, the the that eight inch one five six wall it's existing, mm -hmm. and as and when we have crossings, we 
we will upgrade it. Also, um, we're, we're looking into um, where we have very high density population, we're looking at uh, you know, future Im improvements to, to the pipeline, but right along Eastern Road, unless there's a, um, a new development or something going in, uh, we would only get, look, look to upgrade it at that particular time. And, and that's not to say that at some point in the future, 10, 15 years down the line, that that pipe will be reported. So but right now it's not required, it's not mandatory, it's not necessary. Um, I'm, I guess I'm still curious about what kind of conversations happen between Northern Utilities or Unitil, one and the same? Um, yes, it's one and the same. Um, Unitil is the holding company, if you like, and they've got two subsidiaries, Granite State Gas Transmission and Northern Utilities. So you've got a transmission company and you've got this. Granite State's only customers are Northern Utilities, with a few exceptions. The Navy Yard, um, uh, I can't think of any others. But okay, so, so the conversation for additional service of natural gas within the town of Scarborough would occur between Unitil and the town of Scarborough staff, or between Northern Utilities, yeah. um, what would be the... We have business reps that can come and talk to the town manager on um, if there's something that they're interested in developing or expanding. Yeah, well, I guess I'm, I'm thinking about population densities and wondering what the, what the potential is for further expansion. It's not really a function of this board, but as a citizen of the community... There's a lot of room, and, you know, unfortunately, oil's down right now, and when it's cheap, people don't think about these things, but it'll, you know, I think we all know it's all gonna, it'll go back up this kind of time. Gas is a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a great uh, option to have, you know, to reduce our independence of oil mm -hmm. uh, as far as imports and stuff. But, uh, so, yeah, but so my point is, money, though, right, but my point, my point, I think is with regard to how that relates to this proposal would be, would this facility then have to be upgraded if there was to be uh, expansion to okay. the Black Point area of Scarborough. Okay. This facility, by back feeding on that 56 pound system, it gives the distribution infrastructure greater capacity for uh, expansion. And you've got two sorts of expansion. On the main, if you have uh, vacant land that's on the main being developed, will then have additional capacity to uh, feed those customers. Also, if there's new developments needing mains extensions, this installation gives us greater capacity. I think what you're talking about also is within that facility, what happens if we have expansion? Will we need to increase our footprint? Mm -hmm. and, and generally speaking, we shouldn't, that, that facility should be big enough if we need, if the, the facility itself becomes undersized, then it's internal uh, regulators within the station. If we, for instance, we have a four inch regulator, we may have to increase it to a six inch, but that sort of individual components, or we may need to have put a bigger heater in, the individual components within the station, it's not like we're gonna have to uh, double the compound size. They're putting in a bigger pump. Yeah. 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 Put, it in, put it in the sewer big. Yeah. <coughs> well, remember that the, uh, with the transmission line is 492 PSI. That's, that's from Averill all, um, up to Portsmouth and then on into Boost and Auburn. So you've got that, uh, that great amount that can, you know, that we, we can draw off of. So like Roger said, it's just a matter of changing the internal. Mm -hmm. put, a, put a bigger valve. Okay. Put, well, I think I think one of the concerns that I have is that we not assume that there's more real estate available in the future. Uh, we don't, as the superintendent said, we don't have a plan for the use of this land right now. Uh, we have a fiduciary responsibility to our ratepayers to maximize the revenues that we would obtain if we uh, 
dispose of any of our assets, including this site. And what I see there is residential development happening on all of this property. I would be surprised if we don't at some point in time get approached by someone to put this property together with other vacant parcels there, uh, which would continue the residential development that's happened all around this, this property. So if we decide to go ahead and make some kind of a deal so that you can put this facility in, I don't think it would be smart to assume there's, de there's any future potential for other expansion there. I think you should assume that it's going to be used for some other purpose. And so uh, my intent would be that it would be large enough to serve as future needs of the community. And I'm not sure that those have been defined by anybody. So I'd, I'd sort of like to know what the plan Bob, is for that. Bob can address that because he designed that facility. <coughs> Land being developed, it, 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 you know, like it could have another purpose other than the meter and regular station. It could be no, no. It's once the station goes in. Well, it's either or. It could be both. It's going to get developed around it, and we won't have any ability to like expand it to both. So one thing too, and then if we we looked at it's pretty wet, and we actually even had a survey done, and that wetland to bring that to the point. Who did your wetland delineation? BHP. Okay. Has anybody had any conversation with NDEP about uh, what you're proposing here? We're s no, we're still at the preliminary. Okay. Because one of the concerns I have is that they may want you to move this. That wetland, uh, I believe, is a wetland of special significance based right. upon its size. Right now, you have filling within it. Um, they regulate anything uh, within 75 feet, so you need a permit right. from them. The question is, are they going to require you to put it further away? Now, again, we'll have that document okay. to go before these other now, now, you have another facility that this is replacing, in my um, understanding, right? Well, well, the station was further down at yeah. that point. Yes. And that's where we were originally going to put it, where we had it before. Okay. And um, just the sensitivity and a meeting with the town, they asked us if we could explore another option. We kind of drove around and said, what about down here? And that's where you know, we came to Dave. Uh, but you can see the wetland back to the issue there. You can see that dash line that comes around. And as you said, there's one contour that kind of goes over into it. Yeah. Um, we do know there's a setback uh, <coughs> that's really, um, that goes all the way to the road. I think it's a 250 foot setback. So we'd have to ask That's for the shoreland road. zoning. Yeah. Um, but to be within that, uh, wetlands of special significance, uh, MVP regulates. Shoreland is regulated by the town. Uh, wetlands in natural resources, protected natural resources, which is a wetland of special significance, is is by the state, and there's a minimum buffer that you're required to have. They let you go and reduce that buffer. Typically, like they like to have you retain at least 25 feet, which you don't have. Now, one of the things they're going to ask you is, what other options do you have for minimization or whatever? So before we get too far down the line, I think you need to have that conversation with DEP. I personally don't have a concern. I just don't want uh, you to come back uh, t to us here after talking with them and say, oh, well, no, we have to move it over here on the property. No, so there's really no options if it doesn't work where it's at. Um, I mean, there's a 30-foot gap that we have between the proposed bathrooms and the, uh, what, we, you know, what we've proposed for this footprint. So if we can't make it work here, probably have to go somewhere else, maybe yeah. even go back to where suggest you just have that conversation with MDB sooner than later. But again, we wanted to get a feel from you whether this was even a doable, this would be an option for us as well. So I think we would have to talk about, you know, after we probably an executive session or something about terms and whatnot. I don't have a, I'm personally, I don't see a problem with it. I think it's a good thing to have the gas distribution. It makes a logical 
uh, sense, it's not in the middle of a developed area. It, it's right next to the high pressure main that they're going to come off from. Um, and I don't think that we can develop a heck of a lot there based upon the wetland being there and, and all that. So my feeling, but this we have to discuss this as a board, sure. um, that I don't see a big problem with it. But the other concerns that you need to address uh, before we oh, make a yeah, promise. This, we got a long road ahead of us. Uh, yeah. Uh, and remember, and after this meeting is over, you can meet me about getting gas service to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had enough gas, Charlie. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. um, how big is this facility compared to the one down by the industrial park? Pro it'll be bigger, probably. That's uh, again. Three times bigger uh, Yeah, it's, it's larger because there's two. It's basically two. It's two. It's basically two facilities because it has the 200-pound regulator set and it has the 56-pound regulator set. Um, the one, the one that's set up down the road at Eastern Ave, uh, Eastern Road at Industrial Park, is right up against uh, so wetlands, and I don't know how we could ever increase that footprint that where we are right now. Which one you couldn't regulate? The, the one down yeah. in the north. At the end of, I believe it's Washington. Washington yeah, Street, right, right off the uh, down garage. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know that we. The one we, we looked at, you, you can't see it from here because of the tree cover. Can't see it in this. Yeah, I, um, but it, this is larger. This is, is larger. Be a storage area with this. I mean, uh -huh. uh, okay. We have. W there's no intention of storing anything uh, on site. No. Nope. So my concerns would be. The same kind of concerns you're probably going to run up against with the site plan review committee and the planning board, and that is the mm -hmm. aesthetics of the attractiveness of this facility. Um, right across the street, we're having intense residential development happening. Um, the Atado property, I I don't have any any personal information regarding the future of that, but I would assume at some point in time that would be. Uh, might that might be developed. Um, you know, looking across the back of the parcel, we've got the uh, old county road properties that back up through there and can see out through there. So mm -hmm. I would expect there'd be some kind of screening beyond the mesh screening that you show on your chain link fence. Uh, that would be. What we've done, is, like other places, is the average seem to mm -hmm. provide a nice well. Yeah, so you'll have to address something like that and I guess I just want the public any public reviewing to understand that we would be try to be sensitive to that kind of a concern or issue if this if this does move forward and we'd be supportive of whatever the town was going to require for that uh, and especially if we're going to fill this site and raise it the elevation of the road that's going to then make the visibility of this facility uh, more pronounced to the people across the street. And believe me, we live with complaints from people across the street uh, before it was developed like this with the unsightliness of the wastewater treatment facility and the pump station that were there previously. David shared that there was another problem. Yeah, well, but it was more the it was more the aesthetics and the appearance of the thing and, and then as the Eastern Trail became developed and people <coughs> walked by it, then there was all kinds of questions to us about why we maintain such an industrial complex looking facility at such a pretty natural environmental area and uh, and so we're going to be asked the same question if we convey this parcel or lease it or do whatever to allow this to happen I guess I would like to be sure that we make as many provisions for being aware and sensitive to those kind of concerns that the public has when we do that so that would be. I'm a little confused from the air photo versus the plans that you showed with the lease parcel, the parking parcel, that fo that 40 by 40 easement area. And I'm wondering if you could kind of show that. I think this needs to be pulled down with the one that you can't pick up. You'll see. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So you can see the end of the fence there, uh, which is right in this area. So this is actually down a little bit more on the plan. So this, mm -hmm. this is off a little bit up here. So the yellow that I'm seeing up there is your this proposed is fence line. Fence. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. And then, and then the parking lot. You got our parking lot right here. Well, it doesn't seem to jive to me okay. geometrically. That's just the easement for it. Yeah, that's, well, that's the right. outfall right there. Right. right. It seems to me that the driveway in the park is somewhere in here, isn't it? Yep. See the way the, the pavement comes down around yep. right here? Yep. Yeah. And, then um, and then there's just parking right in right here. Right here, correct. So there's no parking. But this is the way it's drafted out in the deed. Or the, um, with the agreement? The agreement, mm -hmm. this 110 foot starts 90 feet from the end of the property line. And then it's 110 by 110. That's the, that's the, that's that's the agreement we the gave to the town. Yes. So, so you're telling me that the parking lot is not in that. They didn't that put way. it in the right place. It doesn't look like not it's all of it. Part, well, just part of it. David, <laughs> what did they put in the right place, buddy? But we got this other 40 feet as well. So Which is what? Maybe we, well, that was supposed to be gravel. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> bathrooms could. So, okay, so, I mean, to me, the parking space that I'm looking at there isn't in the property that we gave the easement to the town for, so I'm a little bit concerned about that, but that confused me when I was trying to read these drawings and knowing where that parking area was. It just didn't make sense to me. I think what we can do is, these plans are very preliminary, yep. part of our ongoing survey, and we've got to get to come back to... Uh, to get better information on our pipeline. Mm -hmm. So what we'll include is for them to actually map out the actual footprint of the uh, the gravel parking. Well, yeah, you can see part of it. They just need, to, they just need to finish it off. Yes. Yeah. Comes down right yeah. here. There you go. Then around this way. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. A little bit more than you do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's helpful. Any additional questions? Um, I guess I guess my thought would be that I'd like to hear back from the town through the superintendent on their view of this proposal and uh, give us a little bit of insight as to what their thinking is from the town's perspective and view of the future. I mean, I appreciate the fact that they told you to look for another place. Well, uh, but again, we're you know we we're very sensitive to we you know we we do this or we've been getting good at this now building stations because of the you know, right. the, the fact that gas is you know the cheap alternative. So we've got a lot of different projects going on throughout the three states, you know, between Mass, right, and so and being sensitive to the community is yeah. It's uh, you know first, first and uh, the most the biggest concern. That's why we're here, yeah. uh, just trying to like put the pieces in together. This will take probably a year. Um, this, this, it's not going to happen real quick. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things that go into this, a lot of design, a lot of components that have to be ordered. As you, Bob said, this is a million dollar project. Yeah. yeah so. And then there's going to be some negotiation about uh, about cost. And I don't know. Um, I don't know if you have something in mind for this piece. Uh, um, but yeah, some, we, well, there's some other things that we've done at other projects. That, you know, as far as the approach, we'll go out and have it appraised, get, get a uh, certified appraiser, mm -hmm. go out there and put a value on it. Be the one that you know. That's a beginning yeah. point, I think. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Um, That's all the questions I have. Yeah. Rob, anything else? Where's your facility now? Uh, near the public works. Garage. You're right behind yeah. the public works. Right behind public works. No, no, the, the the one that you replaced. No, the one. It That's was right gone. out. Right. It's gone. Yeah. I'm back. What the one that used to be? It was right up, what, right across from Tony Atardo's right house. Right next to Atardo's right yeah. house. It was yeah. right by the barn. <coughs> Over here? Right where all those big bushes on are, the, right on the, yeah. on the Atari side of the park, yeah. on the and south side. Down, uh, on your left. East side, I guess we mean. Where are you going? 
I'm going down yeah. Eastern. Yeah, go down the Eastern to Black Point Road, or just about oh, Black Point Road. Okay. Well, just just a Black Point. Point up here. Yeah. Which way are you going? That's there Black Point, right? Yeah, it was right in there. Ah, it was. Keep yeah. going. Uh, do you have another one right. from the street? Yeah, back up a little. Turn right. Come on, back this way. There's right in. Right here? Okay, there, right oh, in there, there you go. Right in there. there it was. Yeah. So, okay. you can see the White House over, that's getting down towards the end. You see the evergreens right there? Yeah. It's just uh, beyond that. It's just beyond that, correct. Look at that. Okay. Now, how big will it be compared to that one? Uh, Quite a significantly no. larger than that. Though. Oh, five times size of that one. Yeah. That, that really wouldn't. That, that was basically two inch pipe and it really wouldn't suffice. Uh, it would be a waste of time to build that, really, to be honest with you. With the current station we have uh, at Eastern, uh, I'm sorry, at the industrial park right now has a maximum capacity. This was our coldest winter. Uh, Last year, we call it our peak uh, design day. We designed for what we saw last winter as for the cold temperatures. And uh, the effective degree day uh, was 80. And um, that station put out 86 MCFH, which is 86,000 86, cubic feet an hour. That's beyond what it what it's, was designed for. The meter can't measure that gas. The new station that we're building for the Scarborough uh, distribution system at 56 pounds is designed for double, more than double that at 200 MCFH. Um, and that's 1,000 cubic feet an hour. Uh, a typical house has a meter of 250 cubic feet per hour, and they seldom ever use that much gas. So this is 200,000 cubic feet per hour. So Looking at this picture, how much this way, how many times bigger this way, and how many times bigger this way, do you think? I usually do that by counting uh, fence posts. <laughs> yeah, it's, you got three... 110 by... You got 30 by what, 8 there? Yeah, uh, fencing's 45 by 105. So that's the fencing that's, that's about That's about 20 by 30 that you're looking at there, Robin. Okay. Well, I don't have any problem with that. I just trying to get an idea. No, no, but yeah. Uh, I have some uh, land in Florida you want to buy too. <laughs> um, Jason, maybe um, we could ask the superintendent to uh, talk with legal counsel about procedure for us if we're going to um, convey or lease real estate, whether there's any particular provisions that we have to follow mm -hmm. uh, to make that happen. I don't remember. I don't remember selling a piece of real estate in the last twenty have years. In the last twenty years. <laughs> um, I don't think I'd sell it. I think I'd lease it. And uh, so we probably ought to take a look at that just to see. I can't tell you procedurally if there's anything yep. special that you have to comply to. The, the town, hey, Jason. Yeah. So yeah. that would be fine. We would, you know, we would uh, not mind leasing just the long term. You know, renewable long term lease. Well, my view of it would be if if <laughs> if it's leased, that's a pretty permanent installation. So <laughs> yeah, it would be a long term. <laughs> Ironclad lease, so it wouldn't be something where we'd be able to just throw you out uh, really nilly. So. Okay. There's another, there's another photo. Yeah. Yeah. Grass kind of hiding how it drops off. That's probably why it's high because of. I mean, I I would think there's at least a five foot fill in there, maybe more. On the, I, I, didn't, I didn't look at your I didn't look at your topo, but the, those were one foot contours. Yeah. yeah. At least it's probably at least five feet. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll do that. I'll follow up with legal counsel with regard to procedural, and also let's, um, get with the town to 
next uh, talk, discuss with them their view and so it's gonna be during this project. Um, well, do you want to schedule it to a workshop or a session to discuss this with our legal counsel? I think we certainly should um, <coughs> sooner than later so that you can proceed. A, uh, I don't know what everybody's schedule looks like, but uh, maybe we could discuss a, a future workshop or uh, I guess it would have to be executive session if legal counsel was involved. So, um, yeah, I think uh, sooner than later on that for sure, maybe we can get together and discuss it. I'd like to have a response back on the DEP question. Well, yeah. Maybe for the next meeting? Yeah, I think before the next meeting. Before or as part of? As part of. Okay. People, uh, any other gentlemen know your schedule next month? Not Halloween, is it? No, it would not be Halloween. Okay. So you'd be around? Well, we already scheduled for the meeting, right? Right. No. Okay. Great. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I think, I think it's, it's great what we're trying to do is bring additional utilities to town, uh, expansion and so forth. So, you know, certainly from my point of view, this is a good project. I think it would be in the district's interest, and we can certainly talk about the details and mm -hmm. go forward from there. And the next pretty picture, I'll put some trees around it. Absolutely. Yep. Good. If there's no other questions. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, with that, we're going to adjourn from our workshop. And then we're going to move on to our regular monthly meeting. A motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor of adjournment? None opposed. We're adjourned.